We've got Hi, uh, I'm Adam. <coughs> um, for my day job, I'm a software engineer at a company called Codefink, as I mentioned, in, based in Manchester. Um, I'm going to talk about cross-project test tracking with a tool which I work on in my free time called Storyboard. Um, I'm going to give kind of like a brief overview of the project and why it exists, and then talk about some of the design decisions we made, and hopefully remember to actually mention some workflows that you could use if you had to use Storyboard for whatever reason. Just before I start, I'm interested, has anyone here actually heard of Storyboard at all? Have any of you used it? <laughs> and what about uh, how many people are familiar with like the bug tracking workflow in Launchpad that OpenStack has at the moment? Okay, cool. So, first of all, what and why is Storyboard? Um, so, Storyboard is a tool for tracking work across multiple interrelated projects. Work as in just anything, so bugs and features, I'm not making any distinction, um, and even things that aren't related to code, just any kind of tracking of work. Um, it's a project within the OpenStack infrastructure umbrella, so kind of like Zool used to be before it was spun out. Um, and in fact, the infrastructure team were one of, if not the first, users of Storyboard. They had some pain because they were the early adopters in 2015 and it was half finished and <coughs> it wasn't the best experience for them. Um, but they seem to enjoy it now, so that's always good. Mm -hmm. Well, enjoy it more than they did. <laughs> I've been a core reviewer on Storyboard for three years. First year and a half of that ish were funded by CodeThink, which is cool. Um, and since then, I carried on working on Storyboard in my free time because it was an interesting project to me and I enjoyed working on it. And also because there was a bunch of things that I thought, oh, I kind of want to do this in Storyboard, or I'd like to make Storyboard do this, and that were just low priority when someone else was paying. Um, so, yeah, Storyboard itself started, or was begun in late 2013, and I think the first code that is still there today was actually from early 2014. Um, it was, come up with, I think, like, in the bar or something after some OpenStack Summit by various people who wanted to come up with a way that OpenStack could stop using Launchpad, mostly because Launchpad forces you to use Ubuntu 1, which OpenStack didn't want to use, because currently they have OpenStack ID for half of the things and Ubuntu 1 for the other half, which is less than ideal. Um, some people have already made the migration over, so I think Ironic use Storyboard now, and some parts of Triple O, um, the infrastructure team obviously, Manaska, Sahara, various other projects have migrated. Um, <coughs> and the reason that it was decided to make a new tool, so a Storyboard, rather than just moving to something like Jira or some other random issue tracker, it's mostly because no issue trackers other than Launchpad properly support cross-project work like OpenStack needs, basically. So when I say cross-project, I mean things just from like the basic level of it might be a feature developed in Storyboard, for example, which involves multiple repositories. So for example, adding the Kanban boss to Storyboard is one thing we did. Um, and that needed work in the back end of Storyboard and the front end of Storyboard. And so we need to track tasks across two repositories. With something like, for example, GitHub issues, that would be kind of messy because you have to duplicate the content of the issue in two repositories mm -hmm. or kind of split the discussion in two, um, which is not ideal. And it doesn't scale at all beyond that. Um, you could use a tool like Jira for this and have, say, a storyboard project, and then determine which part is affected using labels. But again, that really doesn't scale to the kind of open stack level cross-project work. So you, another example is bugs affecting many projects. So say a bug which affects Nova and Neutron and Ironic for whatever reason, then GitHub issues kind of approach just doesn't work at that scale, and because the discussion is too split. And um, the Jira approach kind of gets messy as well because 
you have more than one actual project, so you end up with the project in Jira is OpenStack and everything determined by labels and it's unintuitive and kind of ugly. And then of course the community-wide goal scale of OpenStack, so for example the recent work to make Python 3, or make everything work with Python 3, or fairly recent, um, you just couldn't track that in something like GitHub issues because it means changes in every repository. Uh, you could track it, but it would be really inconvenient. And again, with Jira, you'd, if you're tracking and making sure that everything's labeled with projects, you end up with hundreds of labels, which is ideal. Um, so yeah, I've just basically said most of these problems with other tools. Um, basically, it all boils down to a lack of cross-project support, which means the issues themselves get duplicated everywhere, or the discussion itself is divided, and things are just kind of inconvenient. So Launchpad actually solves the first three. Um, the Launchpad has bugs, which also have bug tasks. And the bugs themselves aren't related to any project, cross-project. And the bug tasks are kind of linking the bug to the project. There's a problem with that in that Launchpad doesn't let you actually break down a bug into multiple tasks per project. There's a limitation of one bug task per branch per project. So if, for example, I wanted to track some work to implement a Kanban board, and I needed to make a change in the database, I need to make a change to add an API endpoint, and also some changes in a different project, then it's kind of really inconvenient because I can't express that and keep that split. I either have to write it all in the bug and then have things, something like the partial bug footer that OpenStack has in its git commits, which says, OK, this bit's to part of this, but there's no one-to-one -one mapping from test to commit. And also, Launchpad's API is kind of lacking, and mostly it's just really, really slow. To give some kind of example, um, our, for Storyboard, we have some migration scripts to migrate people from Launchpad into Storyboard. And we ran a test migration of the Neutron project into Storyboard. Um, and that migration ran for two weeks and didn't finish because Launchpad's API is so slow. <laughs> so Storyboard solves this with this basic data model. Um, at the high level, um, the first like, thing is a story. A story is just a piece of work that needs doing. Um, something that can go from not done to done. Again, work is anything, it's bugs, features, things that don't even involve code. Um, and then stories can be broken down or related to tasks. Um, tasks, are, is, that relationship is basically analogous to bugs and bug tasks in Launchpad, um, except there's no limitations on tasks at all. So in Storyboard, a task can be uh, is any small unit of work. Ideally, it maps one to one to a commit in a Git repository so that you can dig through the Git history and find out why that commit was made. Oh, look, here's the task in Storyboard and, and read all the discussion around that. Rather than thinking, okay, so it fixed part of this random bug, but I don't really know which part without digging further, further. So, yeah, tasks are related to a single project, and through that relation, that is how the cross project story thing works, because the story <coughs> made to multiple <coughs> projects through tasks, but not directly. Um, project is, in OpenStack storyboard instance, a project is a Git repository. Um, there's no hard requirement that a project is a Git repository, but it's nice. But obviously, if your project's something that doesn't have code involved, like a sales tracking of tasks, then it doesn't have to be a Git repository. We don't actually enforce that anywhere. And then there's project groups, which are kind of an agglomeration of projects, mostly just there as a convenience to allow you to say, OK, show me all the stories that are related to anything to do with Storyboard. I can just search using the project group uh, rather than having to specify every single Storyboard repository. Um, storyboard has some opinionated bits um, because when the project was started, as well as just, okay, we need a task tracker that can do cross-project things. People thought about how can we make a task tracker that's just better, and especially for multi-stakeholder environments like OpenStack, where various people have different opinions on things, and 
ideally we want everyone to track their opinions upstream in the same place so that communication is easy and there's no like, okay, well, we didn't know you were working on that because you were tracking it somewhere completely different. And the first thing there is priority. So in Storyboard, there's no concept of global priority for tasks or stories because global priority is bad. Um, it works fine for small projects, like a personal project or a project with a few people that someone or the group as a whole is in control of. And it works for internal projects where, for example, there's a project manager who is ultimately in charge or someone who is ultimately in charge and sets the priorities for everyone and everyone else just has to listen. But it breaks down when you get to a place like OpenStack or another, other large open source projects where there's no kind of person fully in charge and where other people have opinions which are perfectly valid to them. Um, so you could say that the project team, for example, is in charge, if you like, and that all priorities should be set by the core project team. But then that causes friction for people who are just wanting to track some work that they're doing in the upstream project's task tracker because all of their work they're doing is going upstream, it may as well be in the same place so that they don't have to look after issues upstream and also in their downstream task tracker that they're actually tracking priority in, for example. Um, and so that friction's not ideal. You can get rid of the friction by letting anyone set priority, um, but then that's confusing because anyone who comes to look at the task tracker doesn't know whose opinion on priority is being expressed. And you could also say that, oh, well, we'll just let anyone do it, but there's policy and we have to have discussions and agreements. And well, that just leads to kind of arguments. If someone says, oh, well, this is really important for us, it's critical, and the option for it says, oh, well, it's not critical for us, and we're using these critical labels to mean such and such a thing, so you can't use it here. And all of that just persuades people to track the tasks downstream rather than upstream, and not really collaborate in the same place. It adds communication overhead, which is less than ideal. Um, so, Storyboard has complex priority, and which is better. Um, the idea of complex priority is to basically give everyone the ability to express as many opinions on priority as they want to. And we do that in Storyboard using work lists and boards. A work list is just a list of tasks or stories which is ordered, and a board is just a collection of work lists, kind of like, looks like a Kanban board kind of thing. Um, and lists are good because they encourage actual thought in prioritization. So one of the problems with global, global priority is people marking things as important as they're triaging the bugs, and then suddenly everything's important, and important doesn't really have meaning, and then you add a new label to mean extra important, and then some things become extra important, and then everything's extra important. Um, with complex priority, with a work list, every, one thing is at the top, and one thing is the second most important. And so the actual act of having to arrange things makes you think about what's actually important to you. Um, e and boards give you an ability to have more detailed expression than that. So you could have a board with a high priority lane and a medium priority lane and a low priority lane, and then each, within each of those lanes, the list is ordered, so you can have the maximum high priority thing. It just helps you think about how to prioritize. And by giving everyone the ability to express priorities, the communication overheads are gone or reduced, and because obviously if your priorities are different from upstream, you probably still want to say, hey, by the way, this is a really important bug. Um, but it also lets you track that information upstream rather than having to say, oh yeah, this is really important to us in our downstream task tracker. And it makes it easy for people upstream to like, keep an eye on your project if they care about it and keep an eye on what your opinions on priority are if they care about it. And so that makes the friction go away, at least somewhat. Um, due dates, or deadlines, um, which I meant to change that text to say, because due dates is just the word we use in Storyboard. Um, Deadlines are basically the same kind of problem because a deadline is real for any specific person, but it's not real as an objective fact as someone from outside. 
the upstream project can assert that, okay, this needs to be done in this release cycle, but maybe some people who are tracking their work want to track their deadlines in upstream's test track too, and maybe it's due for them at the end of the sprint next week. And so you need to have a, a flexible way which lets everyone do that. So it's the same problem and the same solution of just allowing everyone to assert any deadlines or due dates they want and uh, trying not to give prominence to any specific one because there's no real way to know what deadline someone wants to see without them telling you. So unless they say, I want to see these kind of things. Um, so Story would solve this, solves this with worklists and boards. Um, I've said that already mostly. Um, a worklist is an ordered list of tasks and stories, um, but they can also optionally be automatically populated using filters. So you can say, make me a worklist which contains all the tasks assigned to Adam that are in review. And that will be a list of all the things that I've sent for review, for example. Um, and then boards are essentially just a collection of worklists. Um, so they can be Kanban style, you can have a backlog of doing review and done lanes and drag things between them manually. You can also use the automatic, fil or automatic population with filters in the same way, so you can make an automatic Kanban that magically moves all of it in itself and it's just a nice handy status dashboard for you. Um, but there's no hard connection between statuses of tasks or information about tasks in the tracker to what the boards look like. So they're entirely free form, which lets you make boards for like tests that remind me of oranges or things like that. Um, which lets you come up with whatever workflow works for you rather than <coughs> being a, uh, work, having a workflow forced on you by the tool. There's some limitations with boards and workflows in Storyboard as, as a solution to the problem of global priority. Um, and just in general. So you can't combine automatic work lists and manual work lists. So you can't order an automatic work list. And if you have a board with some manual lanes and some automatic lanes, then you can't drag between the two types of lane. And you also can't, you just can't interact with automatic lanes at all, basically. Um, there's limited notification functionality for boards and work lists in Storyboard. Um, in fact, I don't think there's any notification functionality. Um, it's, the notifications are tracked internally, but there's just no way of actually relaying them to users at the moment. Um, and it doesn't actually properly solve the whole needing policies and documentation thing because they're not really very discoverable and it's so different to the global priority approach that for people who are new to the project or new, not familiar with how Storyboard's used, it's kind of confusing and it's not obvious immediately where to look to find people's priorities. And also there's no good way to get from just the story list to a list of priorities that you care about because they don't show up in search yet either. But they're all bugs which are just bugs with the implementation, in my opinion. And so in the future, um, the f biggest thing planned kind of soon is attachment support. So um, this is like probably the biggest missing feature in Storyboard. There's no way to upload attachments to stories. Um, that's just because it's not been done yet. There's a spec in review at the moment, um, which when it gets merged, someone, probably me, I don't know who, um, will end up implementing attachment support. Um, <clears throat> and then also we want to fix the big problem with Automatic, automatic work lists where you can't actually interact with them other than changing the filters and make it so that you can have an automatically populated list which you can then reorder <coughs> and then similarly in a board you can have automatic lanes but also drag between them and storyboard will either magically or if it's not possible to magically do it ask you okay you've moved it into this lane which of these two op options do you want to apply so that it fits in that lane just to provide some kind of linkage between boards and the underlying data if people want it. And that will also let you do cool things like have a lane for, which is a new bugs kind of incoming lane, and then triage the bugs just by dragging them into lanes which set specific tags or whatever, which I think will be quite nice. Um, we 
also plan to address various UX issues that still exist with Storyboard. Um, the, probably the worst one is searching, and so that gets its own point. Um, because searching is a bit unintuitive. It's all right once you actually understand how it works, but the getting to understand how it works part is bad. Um, so yeah, we just want to make searching better and more comfortable for everyone. Um, some more things that maybe will happen in the future, but we've not really got any plans for them. Um, probably the top one definitely will happen, into story and task dependencies. So there's no really good way in Storyboard to express the idea that you need to do one thing before you do another, except you could put them in an ordered list, but it's not really very intuitive and it's really hard to find. So we've given some kind of brief thought to how we might implement into story and task dependencies, but nothing really detailed that counts as being planned. Um, there's no support for ethics if you like that kind of thing in Storyboard. Various people have asked, oh, can we have ethics in Storyboard? Do you mind if we send some patches? And we've said, no, not at all. Please bring epic patches to us. And they don't. But What's an epic? What? What's an epic? So an epic is um, just kind of like a story that holds stories. Okay. So you have an epic for your whole like huge piece of work that you're doing. You break it down into the stories, which are more logically contained, and then the stories have tasks, which are like individual commits. Right. Um, and yeah, there's no like Jira has burn down charts and various other random <coughs> agile things, and there's no fancy reporting like that in Storyboard. Um, if it was done right, I don't think I'd reject a patch, but it's also something I don't really see myself working on anytime soon. And that's basically the end. Um, that's my email address, adam at sokka.co.uk. I'm Sokka on Freenode. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about Storyboard, jump into hash Storyboard on Freenode, and plenty of us there are happy to say hi and what have you. Um, if you want to contribute, then bugs and features are on storyboard.openstack.org. You can search for the Storyboard project group. And the code is on git.openstack.org in OpenStack info slash storyboard and OpenStack info slash storyboard web client. Does anyone have any questions about things or want to tell me I'm wrong about priority? <laughs> Go on. Uh, can you deploy this separately if I wanted to? Um, away from OpenStack. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of created by OpenStack originally, but it's not really related to OpenStack in any way other than it was designed to meet their needs. So cool. it's completely deployable wherever you want. Um, second question, how do you track Storyboard? Um, we use storyboard.openstack.org. Oh, you actually use that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you drive it via email? Um, you can't drive it via email, but there is an ancient spec somewhere um, for driving it by email. Um, that's probably something that could be on either of those two the future slides. It's something that maybe we'll get to in the future, but there's not a whole lot of development bandwidth at the moment, so I don't I can't really say how soon it would be able to do that. It can send emails, but it just doesn't do anything if you reply. Anything else? I have a question. Is there a hosted version of Storyboard outside of OpenStack? There is not that I'm aware of. Is that a good idea? Um, I mean, I've never really given it much thought. So. Because I guess uh, Storyboard has a quite a unique workflow. Yeah. Um, uh, from your slides, one of the apparent issues is that um, most people are intoxicated with whatever. So they, they show up and they, they want to use it in the same way that they use any other task tracker, but actually it's not designed. It's, yep. it's designed on purpose, not that. Yep. Um, so maybe one interesting thing it could be to have some sort of initial tutorial where you know, it just creates out the storyboard and yep. a pop-up says, this is how you use storyboard. Well, this might be the priority. If you want to read more about this, come read about priority. So got it. You know, like three, yep. three or four steps. Yeah, that's something that... Um, was kind of briefly being worked on for a while until some the person who was working on it ran out of time to 
look at it any further. I don't know how far they got. Um, but yeah, that's another thing that is kind of something that I think there's pr probably a story in Story Book that opens that door for an opening tutorial. Um, okay. But it's just kind of low, lower priority than adding attachment support. Yeah. The other thing is, within the open stack, I can imagine there's some really big projects. Um, yeah. I don't know how, how that would scale within the work, because if you have like uh, a work list and there's like loads and loads of tasks, yeah. um, obviously you'd want to encourage people to say, OK, you have this giant project, and you consider having five projects instead of one project. Um, but, but maybe like, uh, <coughs> but maybe they don't have that, and, that, and yeah. it's quite difficult. Is, is that something that you've seen? That um, well, we have had some problems with kind of speed of storyboard, um, but mostly they've been fairly easy to mitigate by just making the code less bad. Uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's not really been tested by any of the really huge um, OpenStack projects like Neutron and Nova yet. Um, it's going to be kind of annoying to get that data until it's there, because like I said, the Neutron migration took two weeks and it still wasn't finished testing. Because yeah. Launchpad API is really easy, so. And we bring all of the data in from Launchpad, so any old bugs from like 2012 on Launchpad have the same ID and storyboard, so you can just go and find them in the future. So we can pull something in. Yeah, um, and I expect that when we do migrate or test migrate something like Neutron fully, we'll find that certain things are really, really slow, and we need to work on improving that. But yeah. Cool. When you see you're going to run attachment support, yep. uh, does that mean you're going to do your own file storage thing? Um, no, and so <coughs> the current plan is to have kind of a pluggable support in the back end, so you can configure Storyboard by saying, okay, we're using this kind of thing. So Swift, for example, it's the one that we're actually looking at supporting initially. Um, so the idea is you configure Storyboard to say, okay, we're using Swift as a backend, and here's the URL. And then Storyboard API will just tell the web client, okay, here's the link to upload attachments, and it will then, the web client will tell the backend, okay, here's where this attachment that we've just added is. Please keep track of that link, kind of thing. So yeah, we're not re-implementing any storage stuff. That would be painful. Anything else? I would agree with Danny's thing about hosted things because um, the projects that come along and want a tracker, yeah. um, it comes down to what's the easiest thing where you don't have to do anything. Even for companies, yeah. where things are hosted, <coughs> they're not actually having to do anything at all is very difficult to do. Yeah. yeah, it could be interesting to look at a hosted storyboard instance. Um, but yeah, like I say, I've never really given it any thought to, as to how it would work because you'd need some way of managing projects that and access controls and stuff. Which Storyboard's access controls are really basic at the moment, so you need to have more currency. Basically. Yeah, basically. Which is, uh, the challenge. Yeah, the problem is people would probably want to be able to have a private Storyboard yeah. project, yeah. and you just can't you do that at the moment. You can be able to like bootstrap it and just have a way to like, self sign up and yeah. click on it, and, and then spin them really up an instance of Storyboard. Storyboard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Five thousand a month. There you go. Uh, I'll provide the infrastructure. Let's do it. Well, I think there is a patch currently that's not merged yet, but just need someone else to give it a review that makes Docker and just a storyboard, which would make that super easy. Yeah. Can you do private books? So yeah. Private stories. Yeah. So you can make private stories, um, and you can set the access controls of them to the, just the specific people you want to see the story, but it's at the project level, things can't be private. So tasks are private by nature of being related to a private story, but you can't like hide the entire contents from a, of a project from people unless every, bug, every story in that project is private. OK, so you can, you can make a bug say security bug and say, ah, yeah. that was going to be private. Yeah. Okay. And then work lists and boards have access controls as well. Um, slightly more complicated, so you can give people full <coughs> of a work with or you can give them just the ability to move things around in the work with board. 
or you can make the whole thing private so that no one else can even see it unless they're in one of the two lists. Uh, yeah, Zool have definitely used the private book thing. Um, I don't know if, if other projects have. What's the reasoning behind it for an open source project? Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, so security issue then. Like, I think one of the Zool ones was a book in the secrets management stuff. Uh, so. By the way, the Zool's book is there, if anyone wants to. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Well, no, thank you.